Ron Pattinson is a brewing historian, and in my mind, the brewing historian, focusing mainly on uh, England and Germany, a little bit of the U.S. as well. He writes a blog, uh, a beer blog and a brewing blog called Shut Up About Barkley Perkins. I contacted Ron back in March of 2014 via email when I found out that he was coming to Chicago. He's doing a United States book tour and it seemed like the perfect opportunity to meet him and to uh, wine and dine him and convince him to uh, uh, do, a, do a collaboration beer uh, well, with a historical recipe. And it, the conversation started with uh, w w what do we want to do? And for me, it was always about doing something that had a connection to the Goose Island as far as what we're doing now, our wood aging and botanomyces. And it took him about 30 seconds, I think, uh, to come up with uh, what he considered is one of his all-time uh, favorite recipes. Well, it was really simple. The, 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 it was one of my dream beers, which is a proper stock power, which is the really obvious one. It's a beer that, that was um, aged in wood, aged with, uh, had a Britannomyces secondary fermentation, and it's something no one's done. In I don't think anyone's recreated that, that type of beer. So, for me, that was a really obvious fit. Bass, Allsop, um, Worthington, uh, Truman, they all made these types of beers, so they, they were proper stock pale ales, but the, the classic one is Bass, so this is the way the real Bass pale ale was made, it was, a, it was a beer that was left out in the yard for God knows how long in, in terrible conditions, and, and somehow they manufactured this thing that was like a world sensation out of this crazy brewing method. If you're talking about the, the, the real uh, original uh, global brands, Bass Pale Ale was one of them. And you see that the crazy labor intensive and, and complicated and long method that was used to make it. You, you think, how on earth could you have a global brand that was made this way? The explanations I've read of why it was aged for that long is that they wanted to make it incredibly robust so that you put it through all this stress in the brewery yard with the temperature fluctuations and everything and that then once the beer had gone through this it was virtually indestructible and so you could ship it out all over the world and it didn't matter if the temperature went up and down when it was on the ship it didn't matter what happened to the beer it had gone through so much that it was incredibly stable and that's probably one of the reasons why the, the, the beer was so famous because because you could ship it literally anywhere and it would still be in wonderful condition when it got there which wasn't the case of a lot of beers that's really what this is all about it's the excitement of taking something from the past and getting as close as we can with the, with the yeast with the malt the hops and the amount of hops the wood aging the, the Pretanomyces, putting it all together and see what we get, because we really don't know. This beer hasn't been brewed for well over 100 years, so uh, quite exciting.